Ah, Cancun. No better place to kick back, relax, and enjoy the sounds of a teenager getting their stomach pumped for the very first time. And when I say no better place, I'm being very literal. The city of Cancun was built entirely from scratch in the 1970s when the Bank of Mexico calculated that the exact location in the Yucatan Peninsula would make the statistically best vacation spot in the entire country. Sound interesting? Well, I sure hope so because that's what I'm going to be talking about for the next four minutes. In the late 1960s, Mexico was primed for a tourism boom. International flights were becoming much cheaper, made possible by larger planes that carried more people and served fewer lobsters. The American middle class also not only existed during the 1960s, but people had the money to leave their house for longer than two hours at a time without going bankrupt. So the Mexican government went to the Bank of Mexico and said, hey Bank of Mexico, here's $2 million, which by the way would be worth about $17 million in 2022. You're in charge of our tourism industry now. And the Bank of Mexico said, wait, don't we use pesos? Also, why did you adjust for inflation for 46 years from now? Is that even possible? You know what, never mind, we'll figure it out. The objective was pretty simple. Infratur, the bank's new tourism division, set out to find the perfect Mexican tourist destination and build a resort there. But the question of how to go about finding that perfect spot was much more complicated. After all, Mexico is a big country, even bigger than the biggest cookie ever made, with little over 6,000 miles or 10,000 kilometers of beach to consider. To make matters more complicated, the bank didn't want to just throw money at some existing beach town and call it a day. They wanted to build an entirely new city from the ground up. That meant that they weren't just looking for the perfect town, they were looking for the perfect stretch of coastline, the mathematically most relaxing combination of sand, sea, and ambient bird sounds in the entire country. Now, the Infrature Committee couldn't just walk the full coastline of Mexico in search of the perfect spot. According to Google Maps, this isn't how Google Maps works. So instead, they decided to use a newfangled technology called computers, which I guess sounds like a joke, but they were newfangled at the time, to create a statistical model for the average Caribbean tourists, what sort of weather they were drawn to, how far they were willing to travel, and what sorts of things they did on vacation. They pulled data from other successful resorts in places like Miami and Acapulco, where they accounted for every possible variable. Available occupancy, rainfall levels, frequency of hurricanes, everything. Or at least everything that their plucky little 1970s computers could handle, because fun fact, this whole project nearly melted the bank's computers and they eventually had to outsource the work to a guy in California. After weeks of hard thinking and tantrum throwing, the computers generated a list of geographic locations that matched those in their model. To narrow it down from there, the bank dispatched a team of engineers, economists, and lawyers to meticulously vibe check each site. They vibe check the shark populations, they vibe check the local insects, they check the vibes of basically anything that could eat part of a drunk, slow-moving American tourist. They also studied local economies to see how they might benefit from becoming the world's most popular nonstop stop puke fest. They needed a large labor force and one that actually needed work. In the end, all these scientific models and investigations yielded one perfect location. A tiny island off the coast of the Yucatan Peninsula whose name roughly translated to overfilled with snakes and was home to exactly three people. The geography was perfect, the sharks were minimal, and with the collapse of the local sisal industry, the population was desperate for a constant stream of the worst 19-year-olds the United States could produce. Over the course of the next few years, the bank crossed their fingers that the computer was right and completely overhauled what was basically just a deserted island and a couple miles of jungle. They dug 16 wells so that tourists had something to drink, built 62 miles or 100 kilometers of sewers so that tourist drinks had somewhere to go, and brought in power lines from a city 100 miles or 160 kilometers away so that, I don't know what they used electricity for in the 70s, but they did that for some reason too. Not only did they have to develop an entire tourist corridor with hotels and golf courses and all that, they also had to develop an entire city around that corridor in order to support the people who would live and work there. That meant building schools, hospitals, houses, roads, well, you know what a city is. On top of that, Cancun needed to be easily accessible to American tourists. One of the big problems with building a new city in the middle of nowhere on an underdeveloped peninsula is that it's in the middle of nowhere on an underdeveloped peninsula. So they just went ahead and built a giant international airport too. This whole development project could honestly use its own 20 minute video essay, but it seems like Sam from Wendover is busy making videos about gas prices? Really? He could literally make a video about anything and he chooses to make a video, but whatever, never mind. Anyway, it kind of goes without saying, but this project was a big success. Cancun became the occasional host of MTV Spring Break, which believe it or not, is the only metric you can use to accurately track tourism. The computer, it turns out, was right all along. So the next time someone tries to tell you that computers are just a fad and don't have any use, you can just laugh and shake your head because you know that they have at least one use, triangulating the approximate location of Cancun. But I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. Computers actually have a second use. Browsing high quality ad-free exclusive videos from all your favorite educational creators on our independent streaming service, Nebula. 
Me and my friend started Nebula because we wanted to unshackle ourselves from the YouTube algorithm. There were so many videos we wanted to make but couldn't because they would bomb or get demonetized. Just a few months ago, we released a whole game show on Nebula called Half as Interesting's Crime Spree, where my writers found the 33 weirdest laws in America, and I got $5,000 and 72 hours to break as many of them as possible while they tried to track me down. It's also where we put our feature-length documentaries, our 40-minute long brick-themed comedy variety special, and a whole bunch of extra behind-the-scenes content that just wouldn't work on YouTube. And if that's not enough content, the best way to sign up for Nebula is through the CuriosityStream Nebula bundle, where you also get access to the hundreds of amazing documentaries on CuriosityStream. This whole package is only $15 for an entire year. It's an absurdly good deal and the best way to support creators like me. To sign up, just click the button on screen or go to curiositystream.com/hai.